and welcome to Old Faithful with your host Matt Trask. Please remember to support my friends at Black Hills Blend Espresso, four locations in town. My thanks as always to Hagerty's Music Works. My thanks to the incomparable Johnny Hastings behind the two cameras. I have been reluctant to do the obnoxious parts of marketing, but I'm going to start. I am Matt Trask. I have a YouTube channel called Matthew Trask where I do this. If you like this video, please subscribe. It should be right below my left knee. And while I'm at it, please also subscribe to Haggerty's Music Works channel. And Johnny, is that the name of it? Haggerty's Music Works? Haggerty's Music. Haggerty's Music on YouTube. Subscribe after you get done watching this video. <laughs> we have so much incredible cool stuff in the studio today, including this box uh, Berkeley Super Reverb Amplifier that just came in that they plan to restore. It looks like it had some beer spilled on it and was in a sword fight at one point. Very cool amplifier, which we don't have time to talk about because we have so much else to talk about. Mr. Benjamin Nash, how are you? Excellent as always. This man watched the Josh Marquis episode, which at the time of filming was two weeks ago, and he left a comment, how do I get on this show? And I commented back, you wait till I notice you, and here you are. It's so nice to have you on the show. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about you, please? Well, I started playing when I was 13. The uh, stepmom got me a guitar for Christmas. Um, I wanted one because one of my other buddies started getting into it and found it, you know, very addicting and wanting to get into it. So, yeah, and kind of struggled with it at first. And then, you know, one day heard a song on the radio, Crazy Train, and I was like, if, if that's the only thing I ever learn, I'll be happy with that. So I went home and I hit it hard and I stayed motivated and got that one riff down and once I was able to get that I was just able to learn anything sure and just started with Metallica songs Slayer Pantera Megadeth and then um, after learning a good array of different metal bands uh, formed Pandemic with some friends in high school oh that was a great name wasn't it <laughs> right yeah they should be, uh, they should be uh, famous right now <laughs> Considering yeah, any chance for a pandemic reunion? Um, they actually still play. Oh, they do. Yeah, they're awesome. just uh, they're just in a three piece now, but yeah, they're as uh, pandemic. Yeah, yep. Let's go back a second though. You said your stepmom bought you your first guitar, but before that, were you over at your your friend's house? Right. Yeah, we got off like the, stealing his guitar. We, yeah, we got that. off the school bus, and um, he had just gotten it, and we were all just so consumed in it, and he had a gnarly. Uh, Metal Zone Boss style pedal. Oh, hey. And then a uh, Schecter Diamond series. And um, it, another cool thing about this guitar is do um, you remember back in the day on TV where they had that Pond with us commercial where that guy's, you know, ripping on it and the other guy's like, dude, where'd you get that sick guitar? And he's like, oh, I got it at Pond with us. Yeah. That was actually the guitar my buddy ended up with. Really? Yeah. Huh. And yeah, sad twist to the story, I actually ended up with his guitar, and that is actually the amp that we uh, all first played on, and that's why I wanted to bring it. This so. is so cool! Yeah. That was the this, amp. This is the amp that started it all, yeah. Through the, we will talk more about the amp when we get to it, but so this was the amp that you first introduced you to guitar. Right, exactly. So let's jump ahead. What did your stepmom get you? What was your first? Guitar? Um, she got me a silver tone, kind of a starter, starter oh. pack one. It just came with a little DVD, a guitar, straps, and picks, a tuner. And then, um, for as far as an amp, she got me a little PV Rage, you know, a little obnoxious right. thing. That right. No matter what you pump into it, it's gonna make your ears bleed. So, yeah, that's uh, nothing too fancy. But, sure. But yeah, I actually, I I don't have it anymore. It got damaged. But so you carted your silver tone and your little PV Rage over to your friends, which right. paled in comparison to his Schecter Diamond series. Yeah, and this and line, line six, six yeah. Spider three. So, but you were trying. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was a start. <laughs> did did so we played with our buddy on our little silver tone guitar. We well, probably well, never actually I never with even it. bothered bringing my stuff over because I'd oh. come over and I would just pick up his stuff and right. just, I'd play everyone to sleep. <laughs> does does he still play? Um, a sad story and twist to it. He is actually not with us anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Due to uh, a overdose. Oh, um, four rest years ago. Yeah, rest in peace, Danny. Rest for you, brother. Rest in peace, Danny. What was his last name? Warman. Danny Warman. Rest in peace, buddy. 
So, uh, so you got your silver tone and your PB Rage, and we graduated rather quickly on right. dancing. What was our next guitar? This one right here that you see. Oh, my perfect. My first real axe. So Awesome. I, May I pick it up? Yeah, you're absolutely I am so, more than welcome to show it off. I am so excited about this for a number of reasons. Why don't you tell us about where you got it um, and how long you've had it? This would be considered your old faithful here, right? Pretty much. Like, like I said, that's the uh, first, you know, high dollar, right. good playing guitar that I was able to get my hands on for about three twenty five from the pawn shop. Okay. But when I got it, trust me, it did not look like that. I mean, this thing had looked like it had puke all over it. Yeah, the pickups were worn out. The, the neck was warped. I mean, I went in and put EMGs, 81, 85s in it and polished it up the best I could and like I said I have about took about eight hours to get that guitar pretty much looking how it does did now. Did you refinish it? Um no just just pretty much a polish on oh, everything. I, okay. didn't, I didn't get real crazy with it I wasn't too experienced at the time sure. but I feel like I did a pretty good job on it because it plays Did it come well. with gold hardware when you bought it? Yeah yes the gold the, okay. the gold hardware is original um, what I've done yeah like I said the pickups and these knobs these are a little different I, I thought they, I see. they look a little cooler than the ones that right. have all the numbers on them and they're plastic so right. just amazing what a few little things can really it, do to it a It is truly amazing you said the neck was warped as well right yeah did it had you a, just it adjust the rod? Yeah it had a little bow in it so I, look, I did some research for it uh, first, of course, because I right. didn't want to mess it up, and yeah, I kind of figured that out, tightened it up a little bit, and it brought it out of it, sure. and it's been pretty straight ever since. Yeah. My apologies to the viewing audience. This is, in fact, an Epiphone uh, guitar, as it says on the gigantic, I presume it came in that case. Um, no, that's actually uh, a different Explorer. Oh! Like, okay. I have, I got four <laughs> Explorers. That's actually for the white one. It's just a little better shape than the case that came for when you that really, one. really want to go exploring. But yeah. this, the Explorer guitar, was first introduced in 1958. Um, I presume this one is probably mahogany. That is actually a Karina. It is a Karina, Karina. as the originals were. Right. Uh, they, besides the very unusual shape, and in 1958 it was even more unusual yet. Right. It had several features that were very uncommon to Gibsons, including no carved maple top and uh, simple dots on the fretboard, and so it really did not sell well mm. uh, in the beginning. Uh, but it has. Found its admirers the, over uh, the years. Flying V kind of in the same the flying same V was that the one? same year. Yes, but was it a little more popular? Or not was not pretty to much speak same really. boat. Kinda, no, kind of unique, and it took people a while to warm up to it. It really I guess. did. But then through the intervening years, it it became a reasonably priced way for your blue collar rocker to get into a Gibson. Sure, they they would go with these. Um, and so did you. You pick these EMGs, right? Because, like I said, I was really into Metallica sure. and how they sounded. Right. And that's actually a Metallica stencil, right there from one of their uh, tours. Oh, okay. <laughs> so did you stencil this? On yeah, the yeah, pick I stenciled guard? that okay. in. It, it was originally a white pick guard. Sure. I was like, man, I feel like the more black I throw at it, the better it looks. Right. So, so a lot of times we guess when we, especially when we're newer guitarists. We guess what pickups we might like right. and hope we're right. My, well, it's a very long story, but as, as one Telecaster I had, I dropped a set of pickups in because Brad Paisley played them. But my point being, did you like them immediately and oh, they've been yeah, in well, ever since you Yeah, of them. course. Uh, I mean, after playing on those, I almost didn't want to go back to hum right. humbuckers ever again, but I guess depending on what style what tuning what sound you're going for i mean humbuckers work good for some stuff emgs work good for others and did it have active pickups no before? no they were uh they were actually those real shiny chrome uh stock okay uh passive ones that come with it so so if you'll remember my fans on the show active pickups are have a very weak output and they have a battery powered preamp so you had to find a place to put a battery on this Right, yeah, and I actually uh, squeezed it right in back there. Into this control plate. Right. And it's it works a, okay. It's a very tight fit, but I was <laughs> just able to pull it off without having to 
hone out any more of the body or anything. Well, so, that's good. Yeah. Did you put the pickups in yourself? No, I actually had Haggerty's do it. Haggerty's I felt like too. I was comfortable with doing like you know a lot of things, right. setting them up, restringing them. But yeah, when it comes to right. pickups and electricals, that's one thing I would sure. not want to goof up. <laughs> but the battery fit in there okay. Yeah, yeah excellent. And so this was our pandemic guitar, I Correct. presume? Correct. Yes. Yeah. What gauge of strings do you use on it? Um, I believe this one has a uh, 54 to, I think, 11. Okay. Somewhere in there. Kind of a thicker gauge. For Pretty big strings. Thicker yeah. tunings, yeah. Respectable. Right. You're not going to play a lot of country on this. But we weren't <laughs> going to anyway. I mean, I mean, if you really had to pull it off, I mean, if you had the right end, right. I mean, you could... Uh, you could totally trick someone's mind with it. They're Probably gonna, play they're gonna think country. you're gonna start wailing Van Halen, but you right. start playing some country licks on it and throw them off a little. I exactly. Mean, I mean, yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. You could pull off any style of music with those. You really I feel, could. I feel like you could. Do you did did you like the way it felt when you picked it up the first time? Or did it take some getting used to? Um, well, yeah, definitely with the massive body. And right. I found myself banging it on everything because, like, you notice here, a good example how short. And this is even an extended range of frets. Right. This one has more frets than that one. If we size them up there, you know. Right. You got, like, another six to eight inches hanging there's off a, there. There's a lot yeah, of stuff it's a, there. It's a yeah. big guitar, yeah. I, I presume one of the reasons you picked this, you were in a Metallic at the time. Right, yeah. James Hetfield. Right. Fairly faithfully played. Yeah, he had, he's got probably, you know, 10,000 of those in all right. different brands, so. <laughs> yes, um, but it did, it wasn't a natural fit right away. You had to learn. And it, just to getting, used, it. getting used to the size of it, right. not damaging it, sure. and banging it on everything. Yeah, but as far as playability and. I mean, some of them are a little more out of balance than others. Like when you let go, they tend some right. of them tend to dip down if you let go of them. They, you know, but then some of them, if they're a little lighter, they you let go of them and they they stay right where you want them. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that one's pretty good because that Karina, that's kind of a lighter lighter wood, right. so that one's balanced out pretty well. You have strap locks on this. Um, homemade ones. Homemade strap lock. Yeah. That's metal if right you, there. Uh, homemade strap lock. If you're strap ever lock. trying to save a dime, um, yeah, you can use a washer and maybe a little longer screw. <laughs> or so. you could bring it to Haggerty's <laughs> and they would sell you like showers or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying like if if money's an issue and right. your guitar's falling off your strap, you can make it work. And you want to look and and uber back in metal. the day, let's just say yeah, money was not really right. there. I mean. For equipment and stuff. So let's get on to this green machine in your lap here. Yeah. What is this? Uh, this is a Legator seven, Legator Ninja seven string. Wow! And uh, I actually picked this up from a guy in Spearfish um, just probably four months ago. So I'm fairly new to this extended range of strings, but um, I'm finding myself getting through it really good. I really like how they play and tuning way down and. Sometimes you try tuning down on a six string and it just, it don't really play that great. Right. You know, you could throw thicker strings on it, but yeah, at the end of the day, if you're getting into this new progressive metal, these sevens and eights, right. just, they just blow everything out of the water, it seems like. First Explorer guitar, we've had an eight string. I don't believe we've actually had a seven Good, string. Good, so I brought you two you, first. Two first. Great. Three, the third one we'll get to. But... Um, so you've had this about four months. Had you played any other seven strings no, before? No, I never, never picked one up. Never tried playing one. I just came into it comfortable with my abilities. After right. I playing on those for fifteen years and getting a pretty mad stretch. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I had no problem adapting to the extra string. That's right. For sure. What made you decide to pull the trigger on this? Um. I suppose getting into uh, lower tunings, okay. starting to go under D and C and stuff, and yeah, I had one of my explorers set up in a drop A, and it just it was played so sloppy. So right. I'm like, I need to get yeah seven string that has thicker gauges and more range sure. on it. So yeah. For those somewhat unmusical who have watched the show, there are twelve notes in Western music. Uh, 12 notes. And the guitar, standard six string guitar is tuned E standard, we call it. So drop D, you drop the E string, uh, one whole step, we call it, or two frets on the guitar to D. And that is, generally speaking, as low as you can go, reasonably on, 
on a six string guitar before you start getting fret boards, buzz and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So drop A, we're talking about really, really low frequency. We're worshiping the devil now. <laughs> I guess some could say that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're different. <laughs> uh, awesome. So you brought some pedals to talk about. We don't have them plugged in except for the gigantic Ernie Ball volume pedal, which has a tuner. I have never seen that. Yeah, and for guys that play a lot of gigs and a lot of live performances, not having one of these, I would probably slap you because just, I mean, you don't have to unplug, plug into a tuner. You don't have to try to get your little tuner that's mounted up here. Right. Trying to hear what you're doing while everyone else is playing. And yeah, it's just kind of, is definitely worth the... 225 that it was even though you know it's just a tuner right but yeah i i'm yeah i'm happy as could be with it that that is uh, extremely i can see right away how useful that would be it, it does cost a little bit of money apparently yeah. but is it it wouldn't be a wah as well it's a volume no, pedal no, it's just yeah it's just you get and the beauty of a volume pedal as we all remember is that it it doubles as a mute Turn right, down. yeah. You, yeah. Like, you have an obnoxious tube amp right. that when you quit playing, you could turn your guitar all the way down and it's still just buzzing sure. away, whereas in, you just kill the pedal and it nothing will go through. Absolutely. What so, else do we have over here on the box? Um, Berkeley, I mentioned Reaver. this one earlier, but sure. I'll talk a little more about it. Kay. This is a, a Boss Metal Zone pedal. I mean, I'm sure there's better ones out there, but as far as what I could find and get my hands on, um, this gives me the exact tone I want for this kind of new metal Perfect. style. And yeah, they actually updated, um, they put more knobs on them. There's actually, instead of four knobs, there's six. They integrated two knobs on these middle ones. We all want more knobs. Right, yeah. Yes. The, the old ones didn't really have much for... Um, Concentric um, knobs, right, too. For Excellent. Perfect. Now, um, to kind of tone that down, because right. that's a pretty wild sounding thing i got a noise boss noise suppressor sure. which is a perfect pair for it and basically what this is going to do is it's going to go in and catch all the frequencies and noises and buzz that you don't want to hear right so yeah if you're going to get the metal zone yeah definitely recommend getting a noise suppressor to go with it sure and um save the best for last here um this is a uh, wl60 boss wireless system and Oh, yeah, wow. after tripping on cords for years, right. and when I was back in pandemic, these were way out of the question. Sure. I mean, technology back then costed 10 times it does today, right. so for a little over $300, I can I can walk down there in the lobby sure. and play up to my amp. Right. You know, which is, if you are playing on stage as well, you, you would definitely behind times if you don't have one of those right. now. I played left-handed, and so it was even worse. My cord went from here oh, to the pedal yeah. board, and I was either falling over or ruining my input jack. Several times I unplugged mid-solo. We oh, do have man. to keep going here. We got kind of a late start. We got to talk about this amplifier. Okay. So your buddy, Danny, what was his last name? Warman. Danny Warman. This was his first amp? That was his first amp. That was the first amp we all played on, and... Yeah, I that mean, was the one you learned. Yeah. And did did like his family give it to you? Did you? Um, he actually gave me that amp and his guitar about one to two years before he started getting really bad into okay. his habits and stuff. He just came up to me one day and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm, you know, not doing so hot in life. I really want you to have these before I just give them up for something stupid." Right. So yeah, and then to not have him now, I cherish right. I cherish it even more. So you have the Schecter. No, I actually that actually was stolen. Oh, okay. All right. Sometime last year and yeah, I you know, basically it's irreplaceable right. at this point. <laughs> Do you play this fa fairly regularly? Um yeah, I mean if I'm just going to go hang out and play for fun, right. I mean there's no reason to carry my stack sure. that take yeah. two guys to carry and are as big as me, so Sure. <laughs> we have to talk a little I'm so glad you brought a line 6. I really truly am. We have to talk about line 6 a little bit. They have been for about 20 years now kind of at the forefront of digital modeling technology, which in some circles gets a terrible bad name. It's neither tube nor solid state, it's digital. The The great thing about it is it's super easy to reproduce, so they can they can cut costs, they're, they're fairly inexpensive, um, and they usually come with a bunch of presets and effects, and so they're 
very reasonable way for a guy such as this guy or me to right. get into like a metal sound like without I said, that's, making the bang. That's one of the very few amps I can just plug right into right. and not even won't need a distortion pedal or anything because I, for some reason, I really like the sound of the digital distortion sure. and to just not have to lug all your pedals with you and just plug into it, it's just simplicity that kills. Right. I, I'm so glad you brought a line six. They do uh, suffer from rather cheesy looking effects. They seem to date themselves rather quickly. And you won't find many line sixes on stages with the notable exception of the DL4 Delay and Looper, which seems to be universally hailed as a wonderful pedal. Hmm. It's on dang near every board that you can think of. Uh, you were going to tell us about your special tuning on this guitar. Oh, yeah. So um, the guys that I'm playing with now, um, they are, you know, they really like the uh, the low range tuning, sure. the real heavy tunings. But um, I'm real fond of uh, drop C, uh -huh. which is, you know, you know, it's a full step down and then, you know, what, a, two steps on the top, right. I believe. Right, yeah. And um, so how I did that is I incorporated drop C on the bottom six strings because I like that, but then added a heavy F on top. Oh, wow. To incorporate what the guys want to do with this new project. Sure. So are you kind of, is there a bassist in this band? Yes. There is a bassist. Uh, yeah, full band. I mean, we it's just a full band. we showed up like just a couple weeks ago, first time all getting together, right. and we just picked it up and we just played all the way through one of my songs so I wrote. So the and low end is massive. Yeah, <laughs> and everything. You get yeah two guitar, a seven a seven string, an eight string, right. a five string bass, sure. and Josh is just you know he's a god at everything right. in yeah. general, and yeah him him on drums and me on guitar we just click so well even though we've just started sure. playing together. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good for you. I, where can we find you on the internet? Benjamin Nash at Facebook, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll Kay. know you'll recognize me. Stay I, in I got a I got a picture. I'm I, that's in my profile picture. Okay. Me, me sure. holding that and playing. So you bet. Yeah. We better kind of wrap it up here. We got a late start. Thank you so much for coming on the show, yeah, Benjamin, and absolutely. bringing all your stuff. Let's see. Um Remember my sponsorship with Trask Hay LLC, large round and square bales, 5150858. Ola England says, change your string. Ben, should we would give you him like just a to quick, play us out? Should we just yeah. give him a quickie riff? That's what I, was I say just say give him a little tease. All right. Songs, just give him a little tease. Don't sure. give him too much. Don't, don't give away too much. I but, like um, it.